Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shane. Shane, thank you. I do start with this, so let's give it some. Uh, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? I we going to add anything about, for the select board, the Ron Rajensky email, or? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. So there's a, we'll add um, UVM intern discussion. And I also actually, um, Eric's email triggered me. Uh, I think we should also just briefly touch on, we don't have to go into detail about the northern borders uh, for the impact on both village and the town. Hopeful, but probably I'd call it a 25 percent chance. Oh. That's my guess. I think it's more likely to be the following spring. Just, just the way that you know bureaucracy, the speed of bureaucracy. It's not the equivalent of the speed of life. <laughs> no, no, it's, no, it's actually measured in geological time. <laughs> <laughs>
in essence, I think I could be wrong here. Uh, the village can do what they want, but I would assume you want your attorney just to look at it, make sure uh, that it's good. And, um, you know, if the village is happy with it, um, at a future select board meeting, we could motion that uh, one sign copy. But obviously, it's too much writing for me to even take in. So I think if there's anything like significant that the trustees have questions about or issue with, um, just going through Tom or through Carl, um, whoever is your quickest point of contact, I think at this point. Um, if you just want to reach out to either of them, they'll let us know. And if there is something worth discussing, we'll make sure that we bring it to a select board meeting um, as quickly as we can. Uh, and if it really is something that we should get together on, we can figure out another uh, when the best time for another joint meeting for this is very specifically. But uh, for now, we want to not hold up if we can. So if you guys feel like it's good, um, we'll just ratify it in our select board meeting. The flood already has a month behind the floor. Or before, but right. So as long as, uh, so you all could technically vote on it now, contingent on our approval. Yep. If you don't have changes, we can vote on it now. Yeah, that could be the contingency. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're good as is, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's fair, it's fair, you know what I mean? So as long as it's fair for both parties, then I don't see an issue with us with our legal, but we would have it looked at. Yeah, yeah. okay. Right. Do we want, so do we want to vote contingent on no changes? But at the same time, not to interrupt you, that it doesn't really matter if yeah. you do it tonight, but it's up to you guys if you wanted to. Just to, I guess, make sure everybody's happy with it before motion, I'd like it if you guys had. That's, you know, that's fine. By your lawyer. I'd be more comfortable, but I can't speak for everybody yeah. here. I think it makes sense for you guys to, you know, look it over. I mean, it's a it's a two minute operation for us at a board meeting. To yeah, <clears throat> we're meeting every week. Yeah, but yeah, not next week. We are not adding agenda items next week, okay. next Monday. Right. Mm -hmm. But given your timeline, it doesn't sound like right. it's critical. Critical. Yeah. You know, anyway, I mean, I mean, it would be smooth just to say to authorize Tom to sign the agreement on behalf of the select board. You know, if the village finds it, you know, good to go without edits. Good to go without edits. Without, without, without edits. Without, 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 without edits. Right. If. I think it's just fine that we'll uh, wait because there is no rush. something that concerns you guys? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Anything else on the MOU or hold on harmless from anyone? Um, so once this is signed, can we all have a much of consensus that the, the MOU we bought at the last meeting is good? We'll just use that? Uh, Sorry, do you mean the long term, the long standing MO? Sorry, I'm not following. The older one? Well, the, that yeah, like breaks down the, every with, building. With the, well, hopefully, with the slight clarification on the, you know, um, significant changes that that only do, you know, negative things. Right, it's significant change in value. Right, or, you know, reduction, change, in, change to reduction in value. Right, with that single change. We talked a little bit about this too and, and on Monday, and I think for me, very specifically for me, I kind of got hung up on the fact that all of us thought that the quality wasn't great on that MOU. Mm -hmm. So maybe if this hold harmless looks good, we could um, take the hold harmless and each have our own version for the other party and take those properties from that original MOU and apply them to this new hold harmless. Mm -hmm. Just because I feel like this is more solid. Yep, that works too. Yeah. My only like real hesitation is future. You know, right. even even people that were involved in it are kind of right. like, man, I, it, it's somewhat sloppy. Me being one of them. Yeah. I uh, just I just sure. want to be able to 
streamline the steps because it's, it's you know it's a tight timeline for us because we're you know we're working on FEMA reimbursement now on the lower storage that is ours but not but you know it's it's right. a joint but not ours and they need that they need that MOU to show that we are responsible for it. Did they need just? Uh, I mean, this is a good segue into the other joint building, uh, FEMA, which would be the town office. Right. Did, does FEMA need like? They wanted a specific uh, MOU for representation and. Yes, granted. because for the insurer, whoever insured it, the other party would need to give you control besides uh, agreements or whatever to deal with that building solely. Right. I mean, for the through FEMA your insurance portion, company. Through the insurance yep. company. Yep. And through FEMA's process. FEMA. So I, that's just to clarify that, though. Before you, sorry, before you ask, uh, just to clarify that. Is that for decisions now and going forward? Meaning it doesn't matter the date on it? I think it's for the repairs. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Tim didn't I really say that had to be a date. We're supposed to have an already standing one, which, I mean, the one we have, while there's no paper that has signatures, there is a motion in record. Yeah. Right. That we we have, well we also did one at our own meeting, per Tim Baker, right. to give them permission to take the lead on the office building right. solely. Yeah. And right. You guys have With consultant, yeah. I think that's how it was worded or whatever. So it might be worthwhile, at the very least, just to the original one, just to have the chairs sign it for FEMA's purposes. And then we can well, go and go forward and do a better, something better like this in the future. And say it supersedes that. Person. Right, exactly. What I, I was going to say is if it was insurance and uh, and FEMA, that the insurance company had recommended it, I imagine Passive would have a pretty straight Yeah, I don't think, it's, it's just, it's more FEMA. Right, it was for FEMA, the FEMA reimbursement yeah, and mitigation. The insurance has never, has never batted an eye. You know. So FEMA could solely deal with you on that building, right. and they could solely yeah. deal with us on the lower story. Yeah. That's, that's all it was. So I think, I mean, if it would be just as easy for both managers to write up something quickly that says them two buildings and be done with them two buildings and work on the MOU later, I have no problem with that. Right. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. the, you yeah. guys already signed. You guys already. We we didn't something? sign anything. We just made a motion for that to happen in our meeting. So it's we in the did, minutes. We did too. Right. You did that for lower storage. Yeah. Right. So then that's I don't fine. know if that's all. There. I guess we could check with Tim and MRI, or you guys could check with Ron and yeah, see if that's all they would need. Right. Because that existing MOU, very clearly, the two buildings that are affected are 100. 100% 50 50. Right. That, that's that's, help us. that's yeah, why I, I, think that's that's why I was that's saying that's why I think we needed to do something. To sign that now for this purpose. Right. That's yeah. right. So, that's right, actually. I guess if you would check with uh, MRI mm -hmm. and maybe uh, Tim's Destiny. Uh, Destiny, yeah. And yeah. see if what we motioned and approved in our meeting is adequate. Then we could just print it out and have you sign it or whatever, or the board sign it. We could do the same. That way it would be. Yeah, I like that idea. And then we just work on either, if this covers the buildings good enough, then we don't need an MOU. Are you but, guys good with that? Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll just, so you'll, we'll just bring it to our respective meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you remember what-ish, what date-ish date you guys did that motion? I could search our minutes and so email last, them to you. Our last be great. regular board meeting, wasn't it? No, no. Not, I mean, not not this past Monday night, but the one before that. I almost think it was made in here. I I think it was made I in can, the library too. I think it was I can, the second I can, week after the flood or the third week. I can after search the our minutes and send it to you, and I'll tell you what meeting those minutes were approved if you need that. Beautiful. And I think the way we did it because originally. <coughs> At a joint meeting, I think we we had that you guys agree. I think what I, I think I might have made the motion, which was to rescind the earlier motion authorizing us to deal with the lower building, yep, and um, replacing that motion with a authorization to have the trustees. Yep. Assume the so should we uh, have our boards make a motion just to allow the chairs to sign it if they approve it to be adequate for FEMA? So that that could be just done because we are having a meeting.
tomorrow with the state people. So I don't know if that's going to affect everything. But sign the what? The existing ones? The no, or motions. But just oh. sign the paperwork. Sign the Do, paperwork. Would we the need to? Are. I don't know if you need couldn't to. Couldn't hurt. It doesn't matter. I don't yep. think. But it couldn't hurt. Yes. Whatever. It's a matter of record. Right. It's already record. So, so if they sign. verify it's right. good, we'll just go with it. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. they require a signature, send it my way, and I'll sign it. But. Mm -hmm. I think there's consensus she could do that. Yeah. Beautiful. Consensus for me to do mm -hmm. that? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I vote, your vote don't count. Um, okay, cool. Did you guys, did we get any a report back from the adjuster, Carl? Have you got your report back from the adjuster? From passive? I've gotten some stuff, but <coughs> I haven't got any money. Well, I actually did get a $50,000 <laughs> cash advance to, you know, on claims that they haven't filed yet. Oh, um, that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, they, you can, you can ask for that. Is that because they're that. waiting for catastrophic money, like reinsurance? I'm guessing. It's, I mean, we, the only thing I've gotten for certain is that they aren't covering the, uh, the sewer crossing to the bridge. So. Are or are? Are not. Under insurance? Really? Yeah. Really? So, well, first, first they showed me an exception for pipes under the ground. So those aren't covered. It's like, well, it's not a pipe in the ground. It's actually about, normally about 14 feet above water out in the open. So it's items in the open. Well, you know, it, it's a, and, and it was and it was impacted by a, <coughs> by a vehicle. So by what? A, a vehicle. Motor, it, was, it was broken by a car. The car was running down the river. No way. That's what also way. bent the guardrail. Yeah. That's some bad driving. <laughs> some really bad driving. Yeah. It was driverless. It was one of those new driverless technologies. Yeah, yes, it was. Um, autonomous. And, and they actually, yeah. they actually asked. So, um, you know, do you know the owner of the vehicle? It's like, no, it was hit and run. <laughs> she laughed. It was a hit and run. You have no hit idea. Hit and float. But, but then she said, then she, well, items the open have to be listed. And it was not listed, so shit. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah, Shoot. I would say it again. I'm poking that bear. Yeah. Well, they're, they then come to find out they were on a jerk. Well, so I'm saying that there were items they opened that were not listed. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so that's getting correct. to start listing our, our bridge crossings. Uh -huh. But, but while we are on the, uh, the whole harmless thing for the lower storage, um, I've asked Eric to go ahead and get the state permits before the crews start working on it. It's a public building, so we can't do any construction oh, in that without yeah. a state permit. So and we were told that Jason and Nate discussed that they could rip it apart, this, the rooms. Is that correct? All oh, those mm -hmm. weird rooms in the back. No, um, b beneath. So the upper section is all rec storage. Yeah. Okay, right. then there's a landing. Mezzanine. And under the landing, yeah, mezzanine. Then the landing, there's a bunch of just stick built, interior stick built rooms. Their vision is to knock down the landing and all the stick built rooms and <coughs> increase bay space. That will make the repair less expensive. FEMA has no problem with that. Gotcha. Um, Got to check with the state to make sure that we can seal that door off upstairs, make it a wall. That way, there's just access from the outside. If not, we'll leave it there and we'll run a stairwell right down the wall. And then go. So. But when I met with Jason and Nate over there, it just makes no sense to make them rooms again. They're just filling it full of crap. Right. So if they got rid of them, there would be more room for vehicle storage without having issues. Yeah. So it just makes sense. Yes. We don't need a bathroom in there. There's a bathroom upstairs. So. That, but they don't need a bathroom down in the lower storage area. Right. So the leave the petitions around the boiler room for safety and that's all they would have to do there. Now it also the, solved the, some of the freezing problems because the pipes that froze were in a chaseway behind the walls. Oh really? Yeah, so that's where they were busting and stuff. So now they'll be on the surface of the walls like the rest of it. Yeah. One thought about the bathrooms and maybe even one of the rooms, I don't know. Where is the crew going to operate when their building is occupied by construction? There's a bathroom up in that other park. 
I'm guessing the state's not going to let us not have two exits like we so, discussed. If, if, so if, there will be a stairway going if up. If we have a stairway, then, then there's, that's it. And, yep. Okay. Unless they would let you retrofit a window as one of the windows yes. upstairs. If it, if it met the right size requirements, they might let you right. use a window as a second means of egress. Or well, we'll know when uh, <coughs> Sean Gale comes looks at it. Who's, who's, is the fire marshal looking at it? Yeah, he'll, he'll come once the permit's filed. Mm -hmm. Just ask what we're doing and you know, give a plus in there and tell us what we need to do. Pretty much. So they waived all fees. So remember when you guys make your contractor do that for the village office, yeah. the library? It's good to know. Yeah. Probably already paid for the library. <laughs> But you guys can personally do it, but it's generally better to have the contractor themselves do it. Okay. Yeah. And there's no fee for it, so. Cool. <coughs> okay. Anything else before we move to the next one? All right, Bro uh, field broker services. More fuel. I think this one's attached, yeah. Nice color. Better look. The client uh, agreement with CES. And uh, yesterday, it was signed and sent in to the, the representative from CES, but it served Johnson. And with that, um, he received, well, he had received before the, the, um, the volume, you know, the history of how much propane the village buys, how much diesel the town buys, how much heating oil the town buys. So that should all be ready now for them to start seeking bids from uh, dealers. And then the information will be coming back to the village and the town. Great. Flood kind of messed everything up. Yeah. So the update is agreement is sent in, right? Mm -hmm. That's good. So should we still look at Jack Course and get a price from him to compare? I think I'd wait to see what they propose and then call Course at that so point. Do you know of local dealers that you want them to contact? You could send them names and they'll check. You know, when we did this in where I worked before, there was a, a fuel dealer down the road a quarter mile from the town office building. And mm -hmm. so we made them CES aware of that fuel oil delivery company. It's right there. And they contacted him, but that, that company wasn't interested in participating in something like that. So yeah, we got, you got local dealers that you know of. Jack Course in Cambridge and Fred's in Morrisville. And Brawl Sounds. Brawl so, doesn't do propane, no? No. No, they don't. And, and if I remember correctly, Fred's was a dollar more a gallon than oh, Jack Course last year. Was, yeah. So uh, my question was, is should we have a price to compare to them if, if say, Jack Course is $2.50 a gallon? They are just over two last year, if I remember correctly. One fifty nine. So say... Yeah. So if they're up to two two fifty, and then them guys come back with three fifty, should we want to have a comparison? It doesn't hurt to ask, and that's all. Definitely right. doesn't hurt. Not saying that they wouldn't have a better deal, Carl. I'm just. How do they determine I, I was, who they get the bids from? How does CES? How do they do that? Well, I'm not sure if they have any clients in this area. If mm -hmm. they do, they would probably be looking at who else they've already contacted. Uh, otherwise, it's probably going to just start Googling yeah. from dealers in the area and then what, whoever the village and the town might suggest. So, we want whoever we get, we want them to do kerosene, oil, and propane. We want we want one company that does have all of right. delivers so everything. Propane dealer that the village and the contract businesses buy all sites, the town would have. Uh, a contract signed an agreement with a fuel oil 
but doesn't necessarily have to be the same company. Correct. It could be three different companies. Yeah. One for diesel, one for heating oil, one for propane. Okay. Thank you. And they broker it and then charge a small fee for service. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, for the town, um, the basic fee Make that up. So make that up. On just diesel. Mm -hmm. So on the, the fuel conversation, it's not really much for you guys, but it's food for thought. So they're doing repairs at the fire department. Uh, the contractor, Donnie Blake Construction, found 20 bays that weren't insulated in the walls oh, wow. since 2005. Really? Mm -hmm. So we've That's been construction we've been in contact yeah. with Do. We sent it to their right. head supervisor and lawyer. Yeah, the council will be back. There was no insulation in the wall. None for in 20 like bays. Top Exterior bottom. top bottom. It mm -hmm. isn't like it's settled. It's like it's. Oh no, no it's not. It's, there. Never been there. <laughs> it's never been in there. You would see Maybe it from it the nails. Possible. You know, if you pull insulation, like Sir Pro cut it, took out them pieces. So if they happen to pull a piece down. And was to pull it out. When you look up in there, there's no insulation hung on anything, and it was it's uh, a paper face, so it wouldn't pull out anyway. How much money have we lost for the past? Yeah, I, I have an app for my phone. It does thermal imaging. It's we, really discouraging. <laughs> well, fire department. Has thermal we've got a better app. Yeah, Johnson Fire have Department. Have but I'll tell you, I look around. So we could save some propane right there. That's good. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So what, what did the lawyer say in the response? She, uh, she said that they're just investigating. She's, you know, she just very kindly said that she's going to look into it. Investigate. Yeah, she's going to investigate and get back with me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was built in 2005. How's the rebuild? No, that was the build. That was after the fire. That was after the last year. Yeah, that building hasn't been touched since it was built. Mm -hmm. Well, the second time. That yeah. building the, didn't burn that down there. That building is the second building, yes. Gotcha. Yeah, that was built in 2005. Was hasn't that, been renovated or flooded. Is that the one on the pool wall from? Was that the first on the far, above the, part of it did over above the kitchen area, a little section. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay, ready? <coughs> Uh, Zoom licenses. You can say no if you're not ready, by the way. Uh, so, the really simple thing to say is that an additional Zoom license is $150. Uh, what are your thoughts on Zoom licenses? I know Ken, you and I have talked a little bit about them. So, my opinion is, Zoom was brought in for COVID and COVID's over. $150 a year or a month? A year. year. But I can see the benefit to it, but at the same time, I see no need for it. <coughs> it's recorded. We do, we can continue with the YouTube live. We can always YouTube pick it up live, if we right? needed it. We can put them on, and we can record it and put it on YouTube with the help of access to Zoom. Are you guys? Open to public in the meetings. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can't not necessarily be open to public down there because we have our employees in there. Gotcha. So nobody comes to our meetings. That's anymore, like the anyway. that's like the one tricky <laughs> one that was. Closed. Wait, what do you mean? Say that again. I said we can't really consider that building closed to public for our meetings because our employees work in there all the time. So they're. We meet the in meetings, their office. Not normal operation. Yeah, it's not. For the meetings. I mean. Rosemary can close that building in those few lots, technically. Yeah. But. Are yes. you guys meeting upstairs or downstairs? Up, upstairs, upstairs in the break room. So break and area. you're using the back stairs? So no, we have to keep the front door unlocked. For that the gives meeting. me a little bit of heartburn. Why? Because of the fall. Mm, potential yeah. risk there. Doors locked, alarms on. They come up the normal stairs. There's, yes. there's sheetrock, so nobody could climb right through the wall there. If, if, they, they, if they did, the alarm would go off with the motion detector. 
Okay. Yeah, that's better. Or we could lock the wall. No, but I don't know if it can lock right now. Why do we have a vault that don't lock? I thought it was messed up. <laughs> Rose, vault, the Rosemary yeah, had vault, mentioned it. The vault's out. open. It is. But, but yeah, I, but I see your concern on that. But, but nobody can. comes to our meetings anyway. But the, but the coded, you know, the coded right. alarm lock door lock the coded door lock is <coughs> alarmed at night. Gotcha. So it's, if you snuck under, you, you which you, would get you into the main office. But so can people access the elevator if they yes. need to move on? Okay. Gotcha. <coughs> so I just want to make sure. My question mm -hmm. is: It sounds like the trustees are comfortable. Not having their meetings on Zoom. Absolutely, there's no reason to. No. Yeah, no, that, that's no legal yeah. requirements. They're being recorded and, yeah, it was and whatnot. For so COVID, it's all. We still plan on recording and doing yeah. YouTube. But Are yours on Zoom? Zoom? Yeah. Again, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just saying that it wasn't. It isn't a requirement. Yeah, no, I mean, we're I, past COVID. Yeah. And I think our concern was that you know there are sometimes there are committees that meet and people Zoom into them. But that, that, was, that was a little of my concern. And people do zoom into our select board meetings. So that $150 would cover trustees, committees, select board, everybody. It's for everybody. Yeah, we have time. yeah it's one, only one That's license that we have, which means you only have one meeting running at a time. Yeah. Right. Which we've had lots of conflicts lately because we're meeting a lot more often. And committees are trying to figure out how to meet without having meeting space. And. Mm -hmm. You know, we have flood meetings, but there's just lots of different pieces. So part of the part of the issue is committee members themselves can zoom into a meeting so that they don't have to attend in person at a particular location. Is that that is my understanding is that they're having like a public place, but it is there are meet zoom meetings that are happening that are not in physical places because they don't have a physical place. Can I interject a little bit? Sounds like you're going to. You can tell me now. Uh, if, if the trustee board is not interested in purchasing another license, there's nothing that stops us from purchasing one for right. you know committee use and stuff, yeah. and we can take that up in a regular select like board. That's I exactly think what I was going to say. If the trustees aren't interested in purchasing one, totally get it, respect it. It's just and my opinion. I haven't asked I, the board. I don't care. I mean, that's. I mean, and. It As could. It, at I some can see point, where it could be beneficial, but at the same time, before COVID, all committees met in person. Yeah, but we had an office space for them. Well, I understand. Right, and the committees are all town committees, so yeah. they could technically be in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's one I think it could be right on it. It's our our issue now. You folks are peaceful without without being involved. So if you, if you need a second Zoom, we'll just try. To so does the board feel they no longer need Zoom, or would they like to purchase our own license? I don't think we need to spend the money right now. I'm fine with you, too. I guess I don't care one way or the other. I think that it could come in handy if there's an issue that comes up, but... It's $12.50 a month. I was going to say, Sorry. it's really nothing. It's really... I mean, if we get if it, if we get to a point that we need it, it takes we'll me 15 minutes to do it. Or less. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is that, like, just thinking about who attends on Zoom, like, we do have committees attending and individuals, but I think, like, business-wise, the most often, most often it's, like, LCPC who can't come in or doesn't want to come in mm -hmm. for some reason, or the League of Cities and Towns or somebody like that. Correct, but we also have the phone call. I say what we did. I'm just saying, no, like, I'm just saying, yeah. like, yeah. I'm not trying to answer yeah. so that it's like, what, I have one we, quick question. We did our treasurer, treasurer's report. On Monday, on speakerphone. Right. So, does uh, the municipal office has uh, Microsoft Office 360, correct? Yeah. We have a license for that. Yeah. Why don't we use Teams if we don't pay another penny for Zoom? That's true. Zoom? Could use Teams. Mm. I mean, we did Teams 1,500 people on the Zoom. state FEMA meeting. Yeah. That's a really good point. So, it's just. It's a good point. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm glad to it out so, there. the committee's got to download a new app, you know what I mean, uh, on any of our. Whoever uses it, I guess, tell, tell the town or the village. Yeah. 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 So anybody that gets on that doesn't have to pay. We switch the teams. Yeah. 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 Okay. Switch the teams. Set the invite. You click your in. I mean, like I said, if we have the full 360 license, we're covered with Microsoft Teams, I believe, up to 1,500 mm -hmm. people. I'm not. Don't quote me on that. We could look. I don't know the exact answer, but I 
thought that's what I was told. Yeah, it could be. It's, it's probably pretty close. close. I think I mean, that's yeah. going to cover all yeah, Johnson. Yeah, probably be covered. Yeah. But <clears throat> even if it, what's our Zoom was only five, 50? The Zoom 50. Yeah, it's probably the cheaper one. Yeah. Well. Wow. It depends. There's different tiers. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know which one yeah. we have. I think we oh. have like, Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's really TV good. To yeah. So uh, we'll take this back to our meeting. Brilliant later. idea. Into <laughs> YouTube. Yeah, I appreciate you mentioning it. Well, I just, like I said, the only reason I've only used it one time, and that was for the statewide FEMA meeting thing. Mm -hmm. And it took me, I'm not no techie person, it took me two minutes to get it downloaded and log in. Yeah. It's the same thing, it's through a link with a password. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, discuss completed emergency drain repair behind the library. Okay, There was some post flooding flooding on Railroad Street. And it was because there was some blockages for a drain out behind the library Sterling Market area. Um, and we said to the guys, let's fix it. And I told Ken, I could see it being a good opportunity for the town and village to work together on it. Uh, I don't even know what the cost is. It shouldn't be too much. Uh, 2500 for the operator and equipment? So the village has paid $2,500 for the operator and equipment. Mm -hmm. I can talk to Jason and see how much the rep wrap cost the town. And we can meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. you know, total project cost. Village has this in, town has this in. Meet in the middle. We basically, it was, Railroad Street was all flooded again and it was starting to come onto the sidewalks. So. We decided to not argue over whose responsibility it was. We just agreed to split it and fix it that moment in time. And somebody somebody was at Sterling Market with a mini excavator and said he'd come right over and do it. So we did it. Does it meet the minimum threshold for a female area? I thought Jason said it was like a thousand for the rip wrap, so that would put it at around thirty five hundred. So I think we're just below it. Eight, I think. Is the minimum, right? Right. So you have to that's just a case of whoever takes it has to have their um, program manager package it with something else. Well, I, I think That's Tim all. said it was considered an emergency repair, so right. it didn't have to qualify for that threshold. Okay. I, I'm not going to quote me on that one either. I'm just case. trying to remember there's too many yeah, meetings. But they, they know what they're doing. They'll, they'll so find, they'll I don't find have a problem. A, they'll find a way to package it. Contributing to the cost, but if we can get, if we can get FEMA reimbursement, more, we wouldn't. Exactly. Yeah. So, do you, <clears throat> so who's going to file for it? That's, that's what that comes down to. So maybe the town should, because it would be easier to package that with some of the town's road work, right? Well, if it doesn't need to be packaged because it's an emergency. If repair. it needs to be packaged, I'm, yeah. I'm not certain. It might. For some I don't reason, they're packaging anything. For some reason, it rang a bell that he said because it was so a you're gonna have sudden emergency repair. It was that didn't have to meet any standard or whatever. Could we have wrong? Do you have a? a Designated FEMA program manager person from FEMA yet? Yeah. From FEMA. We do. I don't know who it is, but okay. Brad Vega. Okay. From Vegas. Have you last yeah. name like Vegas? I don't know. So if, if you haven't <laughs> spoke to him, I guess Eric, last you could Vegas. contact okay. ours and see if it flew under that radar and get the answer quicker if you haven't got your representative lined up yet. Yeah, because they. Okay. We got ours. Yeah. I think we'd be willing to do that, won't we? I just wonder if, like, thinking about cash flow. And this is, Did we tell you we're broke? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, just thinking cash flow wise, would it be more beneficial? Thank you. Would it be more beneficial for uh, the town to pick it up? It would right at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no. what's the outstanding bill? The excavator. The excavator bill. Did we raise paid or not? Did he submit it? I guess bill? we'd have to look into that. I don't know if it was even paid or not yet. I would assume it had to have been paid or we would have been. I know ours, is, our rip wrap bill is paid, but being less, if, you, if we both already paid, to me it seems like if you guys have a program manager and everything, it would be more streamlined for you guys to do it. And then mm -hmm. we meet up after it's all done and yep. come to agreements. And they've yeah. got the bigger out-of-pocket already, right. I guess. 
And you think you've paid it already, too? I do I'm not have sure. the answer. I must have. <laughs> I would assume it would have been or we would have received another bill by now because that was going on two and a half months ago. Two yeah. months ago. Yeah. Oh, so that was right after, right after. The day after the, day the flood. After, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds like a logical solution. Okay. I'm on it. Uh, okay, update on River Road East Water Work. So last we had that conversation, uh, Evan asked what we were willing to do, and we gave you two options. And you guys didn't really give us, said you'd well, talk about it. Honestly, because of everything else going on, I don't even have concrete on what the two options were. So Concrete was one of the options. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the first option we offered to pay the $10,000 as long as the other two that were in the village limits were either capped and filled or removed. I washed the thing. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, so an option. What was the second option? That we weren't going to pay nothing. So I guess maybe the cleanest way to do it, if you guys can put those in writing and send them to Carl, and uh, we can talk, discuss it in our own meeting, and then we can give you a written response and everything. That way it's all documented for whatever future boards come up upon this because we'll all be dead in 80 years and probably still be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Remember a storm, right? Yeah. Who's in charge of that? Huh? It was a handshake deal. Right. Uh, does that sound fair to you guys? Yes. Like, we're fine. We, we had another discussion about it Monday, so like I said, as I told I've, you both before, we're willing to work with you guys, but we don't want to have to fix one and be responsible for two in the next year, you know what I mean? So if we can come up with a plan on how to move forward, whether it goes back to the ditch that used to be there and eliminates them, or if they just get filled with concrete. Which and that option that you presented, I guess, in being writing would just make it clear in case we have another flood tomorrow. Um, the village was willing to pay for half of the concrete. We will, yep. Mm -hmm. Half and of the one you guys already did. did okay. And then half of the concrete and half of the filling concrete. it in. Yeah. Of the two coverage. But who's accepting the liability for filling them? If we're doing it together, are we accepting 50 50 liability? As far as liability and what? Putting concrete uh, under the road? State of Vermont law. If you remove the water drainage system, if there is a flood down the road that they can contribute is caused by that, if the landowner wants, they can sue. I'm not saying they would, but you know, pulling that option opens up potential risk. And I'm wondering, do you guys understand that if we did that together, we would probably be assuming 50% well, of that risk? Yeah, if it goes back to the old way where there is a, a sway all through there, if you go back to the original, would there be any liability? If you go back to the original, we change the way the water flows. It would be a long fight. But Apparently, the water didn't flow good. It washed out the road. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> right. And well, my fear is that the other ones are even worse than that one because. Yeah, know. I haven't been down to see the other ones. One, one way to possibly avoid that issue, and I think I might have mentioned this at the last meeting. I, I don't know. I think I mentioned that Jason and Nate could perhaps go down and evaluate it, and I think Eric, you might have mentioned that you know you've got experience in this regard. Mm -hmm. If we came up, you know, those culverts could be there just purely for the benefit of Manchester. It's pretty much the case, and and we are not responsible for the benefit of the individual landowner. I understand if we remove it, so my, my point is, if we decide there's a better location for a single culvert, which will take care of the drainage, yeah, and we document good. that, I think that probably protects us. And, or, and also, I mean, we could always go to the Manchester's and say, hey, you know, these, these things that you installed don't work. And someone needs to fix them. If you want us to do what we're going to do then you need to sign this hold on really? yeah, you could do a waiver or something like that yeah. sorry Eric the other two culverts are they just normal rim culverts one is a rim and one is an attempt at a catch basin okay yeah but it's not yeah, quite a catch but basin one of them goes because all the way to the river yeah. because so they flows they did they must have done two of them do 
two yeah. of them, the first two, and you guys fixed the third one. Right. So the first two daylight out to the river. And, and that's quite a distance from the edge of the road to the river. So they, you know, yes. they, I don't know this, but one assumes that they put culverts in and filled them up, and that was for their benefit. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my concern was, it, the biggest concern I have with it at this moment is, is the water was 10 feet beyond them up on the bank during this last flood. So that means the water was coming in them culverts and popping out them catch bases before the water crossed the road. Really? That, well, they're I six know. feet down from the edge of the bank yeah. down by the road. That so that would be just my assumption. I guess I could be wrong, but that's what happened to our sewer treatment no, you're plant. you're probably right. I know so. in, in, in the past flood, the, the, the storm drain system, which is private, Bubbling and, right and out. Sterling Market, started just blowing right up through yep. because the guy that was coming up. So yep. they put a clapper valve yep. on that, so prevented that. But. I, I don't think it was the day after the flood, but it was one of the days after when it was still raining. I was over to the uh, where Linda Donation Center, and I drove down, and I saw water heading for the one with the rim. So I went over and looked, just out of curiosity. Water was going in it. I went and looked at the daylight at the end, and there was no water coming out. So whether it's, you know, pitch like that and has to fill up, I don't know, but it's just, my concern is, is that it's going to cost us and you guys a lot more money if we don't either eliminate them, make Manchester's fill them or something. I don't know. I just, like I said, but we had a discussion Monday and the village wants to work with the town on these scenarios. So we're not poor. We talked a little bit in, on that May 10th meeting about going together for grants to help figure out a plan and how to get that work done. Uh, but I think that doesn't probably solve the immediate problem of we don't know if something's going to fail between now and then. So I'll throw that out In all, there. On, on, all honesty, though, we're going to be so far from having any match grant money for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is just... Yeah. I mean, it's true. And, and that's the ultimate goal, I would say. That would be a great thing to happen. So I guess we could continue to maybe look into it down the road. But okay. I just, Do I remember correctly that at one of the prior meetings, you talked about using a camera? Somebody village has a camera, right? Yeah. Was yeah. that done? Oh, well, we, 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 that was for behind the library. That was what we were talking about. But, but that is a good idea, Connor. Yeah. We could, to a point. I mean, I don't know how how far we can look upstream because it is private. And, and, you know, it's, the thing is, I mean, I don't know, my opinion on this is these belong. These were put in by Manchester. They drain Manchester's. They are Manchester's. Um, by the most common legal definition of private stormwater system, they fit. And, but my one question is: Has it been checked to see if they're within the town's right of way? If there was what? If they're within our, the town's right of way for the road. The inlet, inlet where the catch basin part is. Yeah. I know the first one's really close. Yeah, I would guess so. I would think that first one is. The other ones. So that would. If, so, so the, you're thinking the very first one as you turn on is. One that was replaced. Be, it's, which is actually the second one. No, it's, you know, the last fall. Um, yes. Right. So as you turn on the River Road East, there's one after where you would turn up to Parker and Stearns. That's the one with the rim in it. Is that the closest one to the road? The closest one to Railroad Street. No. The closest second. one to Railroad Street. Yeah. The closest so it's before you get to the mill house? The, yes. It's, the it's right the before their old office. Right, the it's right in the front of their old office, actually. It's the one that's closest to where yeah. <clears throat> And then there's, then there's one that's in the middle of their old saw operation building, and then you guys fix the one after that, correct? By where the lumber the stacked. The second one, yeah, I agree. The second is the... There's, there's a new catch basin that you can yep. very clearly see from the road. That's yep. the one that's replaced. Yeah, so that's the third one. So there's, third one. there's one in between. 
tool. Would so. the legal definition of private stormwater system be helpful to anybody? Sure. All right. Yeah. This one, I, you could say in our draft ordinance, the only thing I've changed from that is just put the right, right government entities in it. So. Private stormwater system shall mean all elements of a stormwater system located in the village of Johnson. They're controlled and operated by individuals, corporations, or other organizations, and not by the village of Johnson, town of Johnson, county, state, or federal government, or that carry water that drains from any private property. So, I mean, all it, water drains from private property at some point. But that, that's pretty much all of that water is just sheeting right off their, their, their lots. And Does it change at all that it goes under a public right away, though? Any that drains private property. I mean, definitely. I mean, I, if you look, if you look at the, you if you look at the, if you look at the ninety other catch going on public property. You know, if you look at the ninety or so other catch basins in town that all look the same. You know, it's pretty obvious that we didn't put those in. Oh no, I. Yeah, but I mean, to, Mark, to Mark's point is, if that water is sheeting off private property onto private property, like it doesn't matter. But as soon as it's sheeting off into something that is. Town or you mean, you municipally owned, then it's like then we're having a different conversation, right? And causing problems. Yeah. And, and, and do we own that culvert underneath our highway, even if we had just put it in? Well, There's not necessarily because, for instance, a water line that the curb stop is across the street from your house, that belongs to you. I, I live in fear of that every day. <laughs> <laughs> My only concern you it to the main. My only concern is is when them were installed, Henry Manchester was select board chair. Well, that's convenient. So with no records being kept, he either cooperated with the village and they put it in. Yeah. Or he did it. We've been down the so the it's conversation before it. Nobody was there. When it right. Happened. And there's no proof of either way. So if there's record showing he was the chair during a time he when was there was. He chair of the slip. Did, they, did he actually I, live in Johnson? This is, yes. That'd be the first I ever heard of that. Yeah, I never did either. I thought they were farmers in Cambridge. Waterfowl. Is it farmers in Waterfowl? Who told is, you he was chair? I thought that's what uh, CJ said when he came to our meeting. I don't remember that. So I guess we'd have to look into it, because that would put a catch-22 in, and we'd be screwed. Did CJ? CJ come to one of our meetings yeah, in the did beginning. Yeah, you know when they got put in? Nobody knows exactly. He, he just said my dad did. He did. He did. I mean, the thing is, like, everything <laughs> is hearsay. Like, I don't think, like, we can operate on hearsay. Correct. That's what I was saying. Unless yeah. there's record of him being chair or him not being chair. I mean, them even that would be hearsay, like even that we're making assumptions, because we don't know. There's no record of decisions yeah. that were Correct. Well, the reason I asked sort of CJ said, oh yeah, we put those in at 56, we might have an idea when to search. Right. Minutes. But well, CJ doesn't know when. Cliff Hill was the longest standing employee for the village or the town. And he, it was put in before him and he worked for, I might be mistaken, but 47 years for the village. That's putting it back a long way. Um, okay. And actually, so, yeah. Oh, sorry. No. Okay. So um, I guess send the email out to Carl. Put two options, and we can decide yeah. and discuss how it's done. Can Jason determine if that is in the right away? Yeah, you can go paste it out. If he would do that, then I would be willing to have our crew scope that one with the rent. Gotcha. Yeah. That would let us know if the culvert bottoms rotted out all the way across the road, whether the elbows rotted out, whether it's yeah. plugged, whether it's. Yeah. And I still, if they're going to if they're going to be out there, I still think it makes a lot of sense to have somebody look at it. it. It may well be where those two culverts are are not the best location to drain the property, even if it's private. So, what do you mean by somebody? Well, my suggestion originally was Jason and Nate, as okay. Jason is the public works the highway superintendent. And Nate, and it, you know, if Eric wants to be there, I have no issues with that either. But um, 
you know, I just, I, I think it makes, we're talking about filling them in with concrete. That gives me a little bit of heartburn if, if we had a flood and, you know, based on what you're saying, they're not working anyway. Um, so, I mean, we could get some of those questions answered. Can yeah. they be cleaned out so they will work? What's that? Can they be work fixed so they will work? My, my guess is from the time they were put in, there isn't a bottom in that culvert all the way across from the road zone. Okay, metal big, culverts. How big a culvert? 12? Well, no, I'd say 10. They were, they were pretty small. Oh, yeah. wow. I mean, I could be wrong. It could be 12, but just looking at it, you know, it's it's not that big. It's not. No, it's not. In there it would, it it certainly mark. wouldn't meet our standards Correct. of today. Correct. Yeah. You put in a lot larger one going across where you fixed. Right. Yeah. So. so it could already be filled. You know, it like could I said, have, it could be sand. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you would have had to change a culvert if you were maintaining it in all that time. If it was no galvanized yeah. culvert, it would have been rotted out from road salt. Yeah, well, that first one, that first one with the rim, when I looked at it, it wasn't even raining that day, but it's full of water. It's gotta be something. That's why I was kind of concerned, but our scope can go through water. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if Jason would meet with Nate and determine if it's in the right of way, so we don't have any issue. And if it is, you'll order Nate to, yep. and the guys to come down through and scope it. The best they'll be able to do, because it's corrugated pipe, and it's a, you know, it's just a simple push camera, is to get it down there and basically look up the pipe from from the catch basin. Yeah, but it could also go to the river side and be a lot easier than trying to turn a 90. Right. So they c might be able to come in and at least see where the elbow is, and then come from the other they side down. They won't get 10 foot up that pipe. You don't think so? Well, we got something like that. Yeah. I hope so. We just paid a lot of money for that camera. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> yeah, the pipe is corrugated. It's not smooth like a, like a water pipe. What about something like that water water? You know, they push them up pipes to say they clog or anything? What about one of those? We're just trying to use what we have just to look we at it. I don't know. I mean, uh, what, what, what would you use for that is a, a tractor cam with well, yeah. big old off road wheels. Yeah. So, so well, we'll have them. Nice I'll have yeah, them scope exactly. it as far as they can scope, and then we'll see what we can come up with. All right, good. No Let's uh, move on to the next thing. Uh, I feel like health insurance should come after. Can I, can I just insert the UVM intern really quickly here yeah. since we're talking about Send water? It. Uh, Ron has a UVM intern who is interested in both of them doing pro bono storm water. Storm water, Carl? Debris management. Uh, debris. Debris. debris okay, a debris management study for Johnson. Hmm. It has something to do with. There was a, there was a Johnson flood response yeah, it's plan. Yes, flood. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. a debris management. Thank you. Yes. Flood response is what I was missing. And I start dealing with dumpsters. The intern. It doesn't say it's free, but Ron has offered his time full free. And I think the intern was free. I didn't it's my interpretation too, but I guess I would need to be It just didn't it. say it, it could be. Okay, well, I guess the question is, if it is free, is, are you interested in working with somebody like that too? Or not? This is to help them to talk to them, see what they're what they're offering. Yeah. That's yeah. Could be more information, the better. Yeah. And it's to a point. Oh, it could really benefit the emergency management plan, correct? Right. Um, but if there's other stuff that can benefit the village as well, and they're willing to do it for free, yeah. it's just kind of a heads up if you're interested. Yeah, we'll but definitely, if you could answer questions, you know, to get in a flood preparation plan and stuff mm -hmm. from the village standpoint, yeah. I think I see benefit in that. We we love helping students. Uh, and I have the same question for the select board, too, by the way, because we haven't talked about it either. So, like, uh, we've seen the email, I think. Uh, so, do we have interest in, in that? I think it makes all kinds of sense. Regardless of whether the intern is free? I certainly have to believe, given the wording of the email, that the, there's no charge for the intern. But if there was a charge for the intern, we can revisit that question. But if it's if it's basically a gratis thing, I'm all right. 
Do we want to, uh, Mark, it sounds like you're yes too. Do we want to make a motion and contingent on free? Yeah, contingent on cost. Okay, what is your motion? Um, the, the town engage this intern contingent on whether it, um, it costs us money. Okay, so the UBM stormwater and debris management study. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? No? no we'll make are you in favor or not? I do. You are in favor? Okay. Just um, I'll say the same motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody want to talk about it? Actually, no, can I interject something? Just, just a thought for the future that's related. It's just, I think we should almost, you know, I'm not sure who to contact you, probably don't know up there and, and you as well. Um, actually seek out MBU or BSU Johnson interns. Oh, Vermont State University, yeah. 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 You know, actually use interns off our campus. I don't know if there are programs on campus for that, but yeah, we definitely yeah. can ask. I think this is probably through the engineering department at UVM Right. But I we, wish I wish MVU had one, but right. If yeah. MVU has something more administrative that we could use or it's whatever. It's they have political yeah. science. Or, like the thing we could Northern Vermont, right? The thing we could think about for both of our boards BS, is having BS, is BS, allowing BS, for a what's it called when you have a student on board that's like a board like an acting board member. Right. What's it called? Ex officio member? Yeah. It's like the school well, board. The school board is a representative from for it, But anyway, we could consider something like that if, if anyone's interested too. Yeah, that might be. I think Ron was also but looking. I like the idea here. We don't have to decide this right now, but I think Ron was also looking for somebody to potentially work with he and the student on how they select board members. I had a conversation with him this afternoon. That's what he would do. Yeah, he would be that person working with the student. That was my understanding too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he wasn't saying going to be failing us. No, it says no. that he would be donating that as a community service. Right. Right. Well, I don't think MRI will write off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, it's not. They will I don't think it's heavy, heavy lift. Yeah. So, cool. the bear to handle it or whatever, if there's interest. If there's not, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's we'll see what, it, see what it comes with it. Yeah. Um, and one other thing before we get into health insurance, maybe we do health insurance last. Just do Northern Borders. Yeah, I was going to thank you, Evan, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> uh, Northern Borders, so thanks for that email, Eric, about buying equipment. I think we're in the same boat that you're in with the Merck <coughs> grant where we have some steps we need to, to follow to get to the next phase that right. will get us to a point of unlocking money. We're not quite there yet. Right. But once we're to that point of unlocking money, we definitely need to consider what we need to buy to help support this. Right. And, I, and I was talking with Duncan earlier today too, and I think we also need to understand from you, we're gonna need your help to partner with this. Because we're gonna need to help, uh, help understanding capacity mm -hmm. for sewer, electric, mm -hmm. um, water. and water. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you can start thinking about what that could look like, uh, and I think we have some, we need to go back to the Mumley study and, like, make sure that our specs are understood, too, which you have access to, obviously, on the website. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is, you know, kind of get an idea of what, what the vision is up there. Right, what you're going to put for what you, buildings. What you, you a know, what your crystal ball, you know, a, what your crystal ball Sweet. thinks you'll a lot of power. You know, and because that, I mean, frankly, the timing is, is good because there's, I would say, a better than even chance that we're going to end up with a different treatment plan. And if we go into that knowing that we might need to make it a little bigger, that might be a discussion that needs to happen. Mine? I mean, right now we have plenty of capacity, but I'm not sure what, how much you're looking at it there. Okay. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, speaking with previous trustees, there's a lot of capacity there. There is. And you guys made a there motion is. to allocate 
how much capacity for the next five years? We hadn't done the motion, we hadn't requested it. I thought you had some question in the meeting because there was, we what was it, 15 years ago? The apartments that were yes. supposed thing. to go in. Uh, apartment the building. apartment uh, building. Uh, the main compartments. Uh, the main compartments. Main compartments. Yeah. But the agreement, who knows whether those The agreement for the light industrial park so ran out two years ago. I thought you guys made a shorter one. No, that was for, I said we'd be willing to, and we just haven't done it. There's, there's no need to, we're going to allocate it to it. Yeah, and we have plenty to get more capacity. But, but, so in terms of sewer, like, under, helping you plan going forward to understand what our thoughts are, got it. Um, in terms of electric or, or water, are there any capacity constraints you should be considering? The water Electric. looks pretty good. Um, I'd have to check with, uh, with Ann and Nate on, on electrical. The, you know, more and more demands keep getting put on the grid. So, right. But, but the only thing as but, far as but if you have a it also if you have a vision from there, you know. Well, probably put the road in first, but you know, and it's the person to give you your estimate of what it would cost to, to lay. Are it. they? Is your guys grid still eleven seven? Yeah, we're we're still lower voltage. I thought there was a. Because that could determine yeah. what we can and can't do too, I would assume. The well, voltage. no, they go higher voltage is lower current and lower okay. handle it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, which is part of why we are more resilient during storms. So it doesn't make any difference if they need to put in. I just remember when we were talking about building an elementary school over that way, there was a whole discussion on three phase power. Mm -hmm. And how is three phase power to at least to the roadway? Oh, there is. Mm -hmm. in, in the infrastructure that we would be building, it would be all underground and it would be built to a three phase standard. Mm -hmm. So I think we'd be fine there. Eric, we really don't know at this point. The, the proposal at this point would be to put the infrastructure in. Build it and they will come. Build it and they will come. And yeah. so individual, you know, an individual business would say we need X amount of sewer and water. I mean, we can give you some ideas of what, you know, our engineer can give you some ideas exactly. of what the potential might be. So yeah, we'll just have your engineer work with our engineer, which and yeah, which we'd need to do to our for our Act 250 permit. We'd need to get a letter a letter of uh, ability to serve letter from you guys, and that would. You know, that would spell out some of that. Right. The only thing that could swallow up a lot of capacity is if you put in a brewery or something right. of that type that would swallow a lot of capacity yes. of our sewer and the water system. Yeah. More, more, yeah, mostly the sewer. Yeah. That's hard to deal just with. Hard right. Right. Waste. So. You, you, need, wow. you basically need pretreatment. And yeah. I mean, you guys can say. certainly deal with that in your permit process yeah. to right. require right. You know, pretreatment and all that, that stuff. There's, there's a few businesses that could make it difficult. So yeah. it would just. That's oh, where we're going to be fine. Semiconductor plant yeah. is going to swallow a lot of Lots of manufacturing, yeah. yeah. A, bur a brewery, a really a brewery pre cheap of the church, too. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. We're across the street from your office. Exactly. Yeah. As long as it has a tasting facility or a tasting room. <laughs> well, they usually do, it's just, you know, but it's not for free. And just so for like clarity's sake, this phase one is just about infrastructure, so it is just about those first. Yeah, I'm just yeah, just to fill in, and I don't know if I address that to everybody or not, but at the industrial part, I'm just letting them know that when they go forward, they need to get on the electrical design early because transformers are three to five year wait. So that's what that yeah, that's what sparked all this. Okay. I can't guarantee it. I don't foresee buying transformers underneath this grant again because it would be specific to the yeah. building requirements. Right. I'm just you need some just to go up the hill. Right. You don't so. need transformers, you need vaults for sure to go up right. the hill. Um, but when we get to where we get transformers right. right. that'd yeah. be stupid for us to buy a two thousand amp transformer if uh yeah. older building shops going or a sawmill or a Right. Dirt processing yeah. plant. That's yeah. dumb. And we just, you know, we just can't buy a stock. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
interested. Maybe by the time we get our first customer, that situation will have changed. <laughs> Who knows? It's possible. Probably Probably not. It might be even better. <laughs> they were, actually, they were a year out before if, COVID. So. If uh, Senator Welch and a lot that is working a bill with him is successful, it will get worse. Because they're working on a bill to make a, um, I forget the name of it, but basically these are a special kind of metal, more efficient transformer to be the standard that you can't buy in when something, you know, and there's only one plant that makes them. So, you know, well, maybe, maybe you that's what our industrial them. part should be, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, guess what that does to. Out that we get the transformers when needed. <laughs> well, you could start so, the company again. No. <laughs> it could get worse. Unfortunately, that's good. So yeah, so we still have a hundred, hundred thirty thousand gallons a day we need. So you guys are running under fifty yeah. percent capacity. Yeah, we're running hundred twenty-five thousand a day, and we're currently yeah. two seventy. Yep. Yeah. So we could add all of Johnson again right now, and your right. solar plan was designed in. That's good. Are you yeah. trending down or up? Uh, uh, we're flatlining right, right now. Flat. Right now, right now we're flatlining. Yeah. On electrical and water. There's nobody living in Red Rock Street. You know, so it's, it, but that's, I think it, it's going to trim down some, but, you know, you have a bunch of places that don't have people in them, but they also have a bunch of cleaning going on, a bunch of, you know, drying going on, so there's the temporary yeah. spike of remediation going on. Just so you know, we have the state reached out. And who knows we have that 12 long. different property owners on a buyout list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 15 properties for those 12 owners. And if they get bought out, then it doesn't mean that they're there. They've submitted for buyout. It just means that they've submitted their interest mm -hmm. in buyout. Um, but but if they do get bought out, can I understood built. it? Nothing can be built back on there if they no, get bought out. No, no, great yeah. space. But yeah. the town does need to approve the buyout, right? And um, you know, I can't even say if they'll make it to us, because it's just interest letters. But you know, if it did make it to us and they were approved, it would affect your grant list as well. I know, it affects our grant list and the town has to sign off. They didn't say anything about the village having to sign off. Because it's a we corporate village, that. not a municipality. But it still affects their grant list. Maybe it's about ownership. It does it's not property ownership. Part ownership. Part of the ownership. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing you won't get more than 50% to follow through mm -hmm. because they're showing interest, but then when they see what FEMA's willing to pay, they're like, no. Yeah. Well, the state will subsidize for market value the day before, not assess value market oh, wow. value. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Well, they, maybe really they will then. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, I think market I, value the day before the flood. Yeah. My guess is that some of these people will actually go through that. Yeah. But if, if, it's also a two year wait, basically. Right. And you and you submit, not and then it's two years. You got to live without that money. Yeah, because you know, but a good, you're a not getting money into anyway. Like, right, right. A fair portion probably weren't worth market value, but prove it. <laughs> yeah. Too <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so there were a couple of mobile homes. I looked at the list. There aren't very many. There are some, but not many. Um. Ready for the next topic? Yeah. Um, health insurance and then, and then long term and short term municipal health insurance. Go anywhere. All right. Well, this is nothing new. It's just a different year. Uh, different year. So we're looking at, you know, so the. Blue Cross Blue Shield went to the Green Mountain Care Board with a 14.5% increased request. Um, August 7th, the Care Board came back and said, no, you get 15.3. And yeah, we have big help. Yeah. And uh, I called them early last week to Blue Cross and said, hey, it's been a month. Where's your rate sheet? I need it. And they're like, oh, I'll win the week. And they actually sent it to me midday Friday. And the Blue Cross Blue Shield gold plan, that is the standard that we pay on, 90%, 
thankfully, if you say thankfully, only went up 11.4%. At least there's because uh, you know they they go, they're 13.3 across the average. Luckily, this was one of the ones in the lower end. Even so, that you know that's a kick in the teeth. And we went back to looking. We look at we back to looking at the graduated opt-out system to actually entice people to take it. So I give a list of a partial list of towns that already do this have graduated opt-outs based on the plan they qualify for. And then basic saving. The, the busy sheet's probably not as worthwhile as the real simple sheet that shows, because the, the busy sheet's just using village employees and the simple sheet is what it is per plan. You know, a family plan will cost Whichever municipality, twenty-eight thousand four hundred eighty-two dollars a year. If, if if a person with family plan takes the the opt-out, it's half of that. You know, and they have to prove that they're otherwise they, they they get coverage elsewhere in order to be eligible for the opt-out. How does that compare to the uh, single and the one additional? You know what I mean? Like what so, is yeah, so currently we do 50% of the single plan. And the opt outs will, well, for this year, this coming year will be $5,068.12. And this, that's not, that doesn't, that's not enough to entice someone whose spouse has a <coughs> high deductible plan that, at their business. You know, they pay more per month and they have a lesser insurance policy. Five thousand dollars just isn't, you know, isn't enough to make it worthwhile. You know, for a family, it's a lot of risk to assume for a very little bit of money. So black and white, the plan is right now. <clears throat> the plan is right now. No matter who you are, it's half of the single plan. Correct. What we're proposing or what you're proposing is half of whatever plan that they're eligible for. Correct. That's basically it. Yeah. <coughs> so, but how do we know what, uh, So I, I have, you know, I don't know which employees it would take, it would entice. Yeah, we've been through this before. You know, I don't know if we're legally allowed to force them to prove us to us what plan they're eligible for. If they, if they don't want to prove it to us, they're, they're, they they're already, have a single plan. Well, they're already on. Well, they're already the laws. They're, I don't want them to even want to prove it to me. Well, they're, they're generally on the plan they're eligible for. Generally, yes. I'm confused with this whole sheet, but I think you said it's Belgian employees. Right, the that's all. Look at the other one. This yeah, so look at the, just look at, the, look at the simple this one. This one's much I understand what's being proposed. Yep. There is other things that I've recommended in the past that could be potential savings for health insurance. I don't see, from my standpoint, this being equitable between employees. In fact, I see it creating tension when employee Q is eligible for a family plan and we're paying them $14,000, but employee R is single because that was their life choices and we paid them $5,000 for opting out. It's really not equitable across all employees. But it's not the same thing as paying their insurance even if they don't opt out. We're paying... We're not allowed paying, to deny them insurance either way. Right, but we're paying them less than we are the other one anyway. Well, you're comparing, you're comparing health insurance to what I'm comparing to in your pocket. Right, it's completely different. Health insurance, you can't go to the bank, but it's needed. <coughs> we're talking about putting money in one employee's pocket that's disproportionate well, the, to money that we're putting in another employee's pocket. Except that the reality is, with this person that's on the family plan, paying more. they're paying a large portion of that into that other plan. They're paying a lot Out of pocket money. Well, they're, so they're, the, money that, the, money that, the money that we're paying them them to not be on our plan is getting spent, a large portion is getting spent to be on their spouse's plan. It, 
if that's the case, again, I can't really force them to prove to me what their spouse does for work or what mm -hmm. their work provides for insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have no interest. And we can't actually legally ask what they have. Can you legally ask if they have coverage, not, period? If, we're, we, if they have coverage, period? Like if they That's opt out, we not take our yeah. insurance. From all, from all they, law requires if they insurance. opt out, we yeah. have to. Yeah, they we have, have to prove. They have to yeah, show that in they order to get the payment. In order to get the opt out payment, they have to prove that they're otherwise covered under sure. somebody mm -hmm. else's policy. Mm -hmm. So that would. It's different than money. But it's different than money in your pocket. Well, that's that's a letter from right. my spouse's insurance saying, "Yeah, I have health insurance here." Right. It's not a letter saying that I have a spouse and I have a child, or I chose right. not to get married, but I should right. be eligible. So okay. somebody that has a family could say, "I just want the single." They could well. I can tell choice. you from personal. They will. So yeah. if somebody has a family plan, they're going to pay more out of their pocket. A month than somebody with a single appointment, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, and, and, and more in co-pays and deductibles yeah. and everything yeah. else. Yeah. So that, that in my opinion, counters what you were just saying that somebody could be bitch and want to be fair as the, from a single plan to the other because that person that has a family plan is already paying more. So why aren't they? But they're getting more of a benefit too. Right? It's not more of a benefit if they're opting out because it's it's, it's just an option. It's not a benefit. I've worked with a lot of employees who right. have taken this plan and or taken the buy it. Nobody's ever had an issue with someone <coughs> having a different plan and having a different amount of money ever. Yeah, because we haven't given different buyout options. I'm okay. just saying they're potential issues. I, that's, why, that's why I bought this, you know, this partial list of towns that do it. Yep, I saw that. Yep. Um, I, I know personally I'm not ready to vote on this tonight. I'm, I, think, oh, I, think I don't know if you guys have where you are in your discussions, but I'd like to consider this in the context of our budget discussions. Yeah. Because we don't need to make decisions on this until like October or even November, right? Not well, until. Well, we need to give them time to. Yeah, you, I mean, sign up and do the plan again. Open yeah, enrollment starts, in starts the first of November. Yeah. So we really should have this finalized before then, so they have time yeah. to do what they need to do. So that's why I had them bring it tonight. Is we, we were discussing it at our meeting Monday, and we'll have a meeting before November. Have there been buyouts in the past? So I did ask the question yeah. last so, year or two years ago about a fully funded high deductible plan. Yeah. I think that. I know I like that idea a lot because we could take that money that we're talking about. I mean, we could save money with a high deductible plan too because we can, could contribute cash to an HSA which is basically a health insurance mm -hmm. bank account for life. Mm -hmm. uh, and that one that that might the work employee too. leaves goes with them, yeah. their next employer, for health insurance contributions. Mm -hmm. And, and I, think if you, right I think if you retire, you get to... You can you use it for retirement funds too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it's so like there's lots of tax benefits. Multiple yeah, that, that those, are, those can work pretty good. And one doesn't preclude the other. You could save money on that and save money on opt-outs at the same time. I just, I just kind of like our high sector offers a lot of buyouts. Yeah, so like I said, there's a li here's a list no, of. No, but I mean, are they doing the high deductible? Yeah. Um, I, I so don't know currently. And the school district. Yeah. School district is doing I mean, high deductible with a match with an employee or a match to. So. I, I think they're pretty much fully funding the HRA. The, the solid waste district is pretty much fully funding it. So but then the employee doesn't have to pay that extra high deductible. Yeah, right. right. So the city will use the HRA. That's a different way to do it. it. Yeah, I'm not thinking that way. Cool. I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Duncan, you know, you, one of the things you mentioned is like the budget. We were looking at ours, of course, that's different than the towns. Like, if we go by this plan, we actually save money by doing the. The way why he's if all of the assumptions are correct. No, well, no. The way it is, just because we we would have another employee taking the opt out, okay. so we would actually if, save. If money. if that if that employee actually does take the opt out, right? Right. He will. He will. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, there's, uh, an employee that's there's an employee in the room who will. Apparently. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah. 
So, but I think like a high deductible plan is also, to Evan's point, something we should be considering in all of this. So could you guys get that information there. to us? And what's a high deductible plan? Uh, is, it, so is it cheaper? Than sure. Okay, I, I, I can <coughs> speak to Excel now. This was a pre-Affordable Health Care Act plan. Um, so the city of Minuski, until we got forced into the, the new system, went with Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, high deductible PPO, they called it. And because the, the JY plan got out of control. <coughs> and it was a, it was a, a plan where it, the, the, the original deductible is $10,000, okay? And the, so after $10,000, everything's paid. Oh, like a flex pay. And then the, yeah, no, the city. No, different. You, pay for, you basically pay for your expenses unless yep. they're routine health checks. Everything else you pay, you pay out of pocket up to $10,000. Like SMUT, I know it's the first $2,500 we pay, and then everything after that. So Exactly, that's the deductible. So, okay. And then the city had a, gave all the employees a medical only credit card. Yeah. Yeah, H, whatever. This one was different than some because the, they did, it didn't, you didn't get to take the money, it was the city's money. So they funded it. That's they funded it right. for $9,000. Out of the ten, so the first nine thousand is taken care of. Yeah. If you, so if you went over, you're gonna pay a thousand dollars for your whole family, which that's quite reasonable. Yeah. And, and, the and then if you don't go over, you you didn't pay anything, and say you only used three thousand medical, that money goes back to this pal. Yeah. That's an HRA. That's yeah. HRA. That's an HRA. So, right. HSA. An HSA is, say your deductible is ten thousand, and we agree to fully fund it. Mm -hmm. Every quarter, we write a check into an HSA for $2,500. Mm -hmm. It's that employees. It's that employees with restrictions. Checkbook. It's like having a restricted fund. Yeah. So it that employee easy. would only have $25,000 and then they pay after that? or Well, they have like whatever the deductible was. So the deductible on the plan from Blue Cross Blue Shield. Would as long as the person that on that plan has the plan, they can put money into, there is a limit, like a federal limit, but they can put money into this bank account, it's just a bank account, mm -hmm. with restricted use for medical expense until you retire, and then you can also draw it off draw off it for retirement, mm -hmm. and it has lots of like tax benefit too, like when you do your income taxes, it's not taxable money that you put in that HSA. So if you have an HSA for five years, and the de deductible levels, by the way, can vary. Like you can set different levels. There's a 5,000, 10,000, 2,500, depends. And based on that level, would determine how much the company pays and how much the employee pays for sure. that high deductible plan. Um, but if you stayed at a company for five years and you submit money to that HSA bank account, you can submit, you can have an auto withdraw from your, bank, from your uh, paycheck. Or you can just submit, like when you're doing taxes at the end of the year, your accountant might say this is a good, like this is non-taxable funds. If you load into this account, put as much in as you can. Um, once you leave, at, like if you're at that company for five years and you leave, that HSA account is always with you, which is not the same thing as the HRA. Right. Um, so if, if one of our employees, take one of our employees, say they're in pretty good health, they do $5,000 a year. Yeah. Uh, they only pay deductibles or whatever, like on this plan. If we did that type of plan and had it, they have to pay the first ten thousand. Then basically, all their medical is out of pocket. It is, but they're loading money. They're loading paycheck money that they would otherwise be paying toward to an insurance company that they never see again. Instead, you're taking the equivalent of that money if you're smart. If you're smart with your money, taking that equivalent and throwing it into that HSA where it's not taxed and it's yours to spend. So you're basically spending out of the HSA. You're away for uh, a rainy day, more or less, a, a medical issue. But So yearly, that person would now be out of pocket that 5000 where they wouldn't be in the current plan. Well, but instead of, playing your weekly, instead of paying your weekly, instead of like a different plan, instead of paying your weekly insurance premium payment, you're taking that premium payment out and putting in that HSA. So your HSA is building over time. So that meeting that ten thousand dollar deductible, you don't feel the pain of it coming out of your pocket because you're using your HSA account for your expenses. So you're talking about the municipality basically fronting it, so you have the full force of it at the beginning of the year. And then no, just, the, it and doesn't. That's the downside to it. The downside is 
Well, I mean, we could. We could choose could. to put money in the HSA. Yeah, we could and then do you that. Can, and then the employee's money could go to paying back that. It's not a loan. Like, once right. the company you gives see? it, it's their, the okay. employee's money. So okay. we could, like, we could front load $2,000 or $1,000 or whatever amount into the HSA. <clears throat> or we could not put any into the HSA, and the employee, instead of paying insurance premiums, puts money into the HSA. And we could contribute a portion of the HSA. And we could contribute a, a portion. But in your example, like, yeah, the HSA starts out at $0 unless it's front loaded. Oh. But if you have any out of pocket expenses and you keep your receipts, you can pay yourself back out of that HSA when it's loaded quarterly by. Yeah. the municipality or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think the whole purpose of this discussion now is, is that a high deductible plan, HSA, HRA, the actual plan itself is less expensive. The, the plan expense is vastly less, less expensive to us, yes. Because you're reducing risk for the insurance company right. by raising the deductible. But it's higher for our but, employees. So I, I looked only, at the ones that they offered. If we choose not to fund the HSA. If we fully funded the HSA, it could be a thirty thousand dollar deductible, and we could fully fund it. The employee would be out zero dollars. Right. They're already out premiums every month. Right. right. They would be out less. So if that was, I the looked answer. at the plans not this year. I had time this year, but last year when I was working up health insurance ideas, I looked at those high deductibles and. Once you are funded, to, you fund to meet the deductible, meet the high deductibles. You're really not saving any money. If we fund them, but we don't have to fund them. Right. Like I'm on a high deductible plan at work, and my company doesn't fund my HSA. <coughs> so I still pay a so premium, and about, then I take the balance of that premium. So we're talking about reducing our employees' benefits. No, we're not. Well, that's what I was. No, no, we can make the decision on whether we want to reduce that. We can make the decision, do we want the money that we're spending to go to an insurance company or do we want it to go to our employees? Mm -hmm. That's the decision because you're, you can pay the same premium amounts or you can pay less. It doesn't like whatever. There are options. That's the nice thing about a high deductible is that there are options for how you set it up. Where we could be paying $2,000 less per employee <coughs> and we're doing that HSA funding to help them meet their deductible. Pre, their deductible. Uh, for the year, not fully meeting their deductible, they pay in the balance. But the difference is, we're not paying for insurance, health insurance companies to run. Instead, we're paying money into an account that is used for our employee in the long term. Mm -hmm. Which, when you get right down to it, if the employee has to use it to offset their expenses, you're still paying the insurance company. Well, the, if they do, yeah. If they, if they do. The thing is that I have an HSA right now. I have a $5,000 deductible, so I'm paying all of my medical expenses. And which, by the way, they're not small at the moment. I go to the chiropractor multiple times a week. <laughs> um, but I've had a lot of big expenses this year, and I pretty much always have $1,000 in my HSA at any point, even after making big paychecks out for medical expense. Like, maybe that's more information than I should be sharing, but I like it because I know that I can put more money in. If I have extra money at the end of the paycheck, I can put more money into that account, and it's always mine. But don't you feel like you're it's paying it and not the company? Don't you feel like you're paying, paying it out of pocket anyways? I don't because I'd be paying an insurance company through premiums anyway. Yeah, at the end of the day, like, even if it was net zero, Eric, because you, you researched this last year and didn't see significant savings. Even if it was net zero to the municipality and the employee, an employee that's still in good health can still can leave here in 10 years with 20 grand in an account that's their money. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem so must be risk on the first half of the year of the first, you know. It is the first, first half of the first, first year, year. yeah. 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 It first builds half, up. First year. Yep. Which, which we could look at that. You you can certainly front load the plan yeah. to to cover that exposure. Um, so I, I think the takeaway for me is we should we should be thinking about health insurance options, not just what we currently have. Mm -hmm. And you know, employees well we sometimes can, we are resistant to, to even the idea of it because it doesn't look like traditional insurance. Mm -hmm. But if they think about it for a while. 
Oh yeah. It starts to make oh, sense. Oh yeah, when we, in Winooski, we went to the plan, there was, there was an initial grousing for quite a while until they realized that they were spending less money. Until right. they realized they were actually spending less. Right. Yeah. And I'm definitely open to hear right. it. I mean, if this will make it easier for the, our employees, I'm 100%, I don't care traditional or not, whatever benefits them and us kind of at the same exact time, I'm open for under, trying to understand it. Carl? Uh, Mary Town uses the high deductible HSA plan. Please move negotiated. That is their insurance plan. Management employees have the option of selecting that. And then the clerical union are um, negotiated to have that option. So they could either pick that high deductible HSA plan or stay in the, the platinum plan which is what the EMTs and the public works communities have. Mm -hmm. Doing the budgets, you know, going through the premiums and the police union and all the management that join to get the same um, deal as the police officers. So the police officers get 50% of the deductible amount for their coverage, whatever it might be. It's different if you're family plan. Now right. I think it's around $5,800 or $5,600 a year. Mm -hmm. If it's single, it's down around uh, $2,800 a year. So the town is giving the employees 50% of their annual deductible amount. The plan was they would get it for quarterly installments. It goes directly into their HSA. So one con of this for the employee is the record keeping. They have to have a separate bank account just for this. Then there are tax things that have to be taken care of every year. Mm -hmm. the big advantage for them is what Evan, Evan was pointing out. This money is theirs. And the healthy people, they're, they're, they're banking up a big bank account. Yeah, and then every uh, year it rolls up. Well, healthy people are people. banking money, and now they can invest HSA money so you can earn high interest on your HSA. Well, the HSA yeah, that account has that investment changed. on it. Did that change yeah. two years ago or last year? So on top of that very town plan is that if an employee exceeds the 50% of the deductible that the town is fronting for them, then the town reimburses them 80% of the remaining deductible amount. So let's say it's a single employee. In a calendar year? In a calendar year. So if it's $2,800 annual deductible, and they um, use up the $1,400 the town has put in their HSA, and they have more deductible, and it goes up to $2,000 total. That difference at $600, the town was reimbursing at 80% of that $600. Mm -hmm. The employee has to put in the other 20 and of course, once their deductible gets to the $2,800 level, then the insurance company pays everything. And from doing the budgets for years and years now of that, and looking at what the police officers were getting, what the premiums were, total costs for the town, giving them money and reimbursing them deductible sometimes, it was still cheaper. And so, um, when I heard that some clerical union employees wanted to switch over, I was always no good because <laughs> it is cheaper. Well, cheaper than platinum. Even with yeah. that plan like they're doing it where they're reimbursing more than what they're giving them. Yeah. It's still cheaper. So could you give us the, the Barry plan options? Yeah. That'd be awesome. Now I'm comparing that what they're doing for the HSA high deductible plan to the Platinum is standard right. plan, yeah, right. that's what everybody else has. And did platinum. they do 100% of platinum? Did they do 100%? So the... What, what was the, the town... Yeah, the did the town pay 100% of the no, premium? The pay what, how, what percentage of the premium did they pay? Do you know? Uh, it's around the 12 and 14%. So the employee paid roughly 15%, the town paid 85%. Yes, roughly. Okay. Because they were getting so four different... Mm -hmm. So my biggest thing is 
tease you when I just get a slot number in front of me. How much would you save with a single plan? How much would you save for a personal plan? How much would you save for the adult going with this other plan? Yeah. Well, that's insurance the, isn't my game. That's the, that's the thing so, I was saying. We could look at that completely separate of this. You could do that regardless of what plan you're on. Yeah. So we'll take, so Carl, you don't mind taking that action on the high deductible? Yeah. And then we'll also think about what's being proposed because I think we need to, like, I need a little time to think about it. Uh, I do think. No, it's a bad yeah. story on this really quick. We tasked Eric with trying to find money to save us money so that we could get the raise that we discussed last year. So that's what um, our goal was to try to save money. So. Understood. That's, that's what um, we were shooting for. That's yeah, I don't think the select board is prepared to make a, you know, I think we're going to look at it holistically with the budget when we set rates of compensation for the clerk and treasurer, probably right around that time. Um, I can tell you personally, I would like to see it if there was more of a standard opt-out amount. So you could propose 50% of a two-person plan or 75% of a single-person plan, but just this, the plan that they're eligible for, I personally don't feel it's equitable across all employees. If you could think about it, it's numbers that would be, I mean, they're right here. Right. Mm -hmm. Your single do and adult was right there. And, and I get what you're saying, but it just kind of makes sense to me that whoever's got the family plan is paying twice what the single plan is a month anyway. So if they were to receive more for an opt out than a single plan. I know. think the high school used to do it that you, if you opted out, if you didn't take the plan that they paid a flat fee. And that's what we do right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We're just trying to make it enticeable for somebody with a family plan to opt out. Maybe and we should consider a higher flat fee. Yeah. Right. I guess that's what I was saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that's what the village is interested in. Okay, so we all have mm -hmm. takeaways to... Yep. So yeah. If you get that information, Carl, I'd appreciate it if you throw it to me also. And not my Ken underscore Aaron one. Use my municipal one. Oh my gosh, huh. my personal keeps being used everywhere. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, just, oh, it's, it's all the distribution seven. list, damn it. Uh, okay, next item is the long-term, short-term. There's actually a Good third try. term. Uh, short-term. There it is. So the short term, just an update, because you guys told us to do what we need to do back in July. Uh, but the update is, unless you have any concerns with it, is that we're going to go look for somebody to put insulation, uh, some sort of a um, barrier and sheetrock up to make sure we're just protecting the downstairs. That's the first thing. Not and that's that's short term, like that's immediate term. We're headed right. that way. Midterm, um, we think that we're going to have to get to a point where we get everybody from upstairs downstairs mm -hmm. so that we can make decisions on long term planning because no matter what, we're going to have to move people from upstairs to downstairs, whether we keep Downstairs the way it is, or we rejig things. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's going to have to be a get people downstairs at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, and then long term, uh, we need to probably work together on what long term looks like. Uh, so, do we want to work toward getting offices upstairs and more community space downstairs? Uh, should we be thinking about something else? But I think we're not quite there yet. I think we need to get the <coughs> term handled. So my, we go. my understanding of it Beth, was that we had to restore the office to what it was before we did any mitigation. Uh, we what? We have to that would be a midterm anyway, but I think we have to make sure that for FEMA, my understanding is that we don't have to restore it to what it was. We have to restore it to a workable environment. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly what it was, I don't, under, I don't believe. 
uh, and then yeah, mitigation would come later or redesign would come. Yeah, what well, we They're going to reimburse based on of that some determination of what was there. If we want to make additional improvements about and beyond that, that's basically on us. Yeah. So would the insurance company allow you to just insulate your barrier and put on wallboard without finishing it, without putting the carpet in? Well, and hold that to continue because they generally don't let you fix half your car and then fix the other half six months later. I think it's about protecting the building though. Yeah. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Cold yeah. weather's coming. That's why we were just on the fire department. Yeah. I mean, we can definitely have Ron uh, research that and just make sure that we're not losing eligibility by kind of piecemealing it. I'll tell you what, you, you definitely want to at least get your mud and sanding done before you move people downstairs because. Yeah. It's already prepped for that. All the all the furniture is piled and covered. You know why do that over and over? So Friday morning there's a meeting with FEMA. If any of you would like to attend, it's at eight o'clock at the office. Or if you would like to attend but can't be there in person, you will attend by Zoom. Let us know and we'll make arrangements. How to do some mitigation work while the repairs are being made. Uh, so Ron uh, has set up this meeting with someone from FEMA. So it's a town FEMA meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would rather, I would FEMA prefer, FEMA. I just want to say, I would prefer that we not have a quorum. I would prefer it not be a public meeting, and you guys do what you need to do for that meeting, personally. Because the minute three of us show up, it's a meeting. Right. I mean. So I guess, are well, the, yeah, I guess. If you the, want somebody there, then designate a yeah, person. Yeah, person. I guess the big question is, other than uh, making sure there's FEMA reimbursement, are you guys kind of OK with that, getting it where we don't lose heat, if we're not going to lose FEMA, and then getting it rebuilt, and I guess the mid-range would be getting it rebuilt, getting people moved downstairs, and then we'll get back to our long-term range about what we want to do with the building. Or you could relocate so we could put sewer treatment plant. That would be the best thing. They <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hall could be beautiful. Could we just move office. the building on top of the existing? <laughs> McClellan Hall would be a beautiful municipal office. I've heard it's for sale. That's an interesting topic. Thank you for commenting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 950 ton all terrain crane just lifts it right up 10 feet. Throwing it out there. I'm going with um, the building is going to be needing a lot of work. Yeah. While we're talking about the municipal building, uh, long term planning, we're going into budget season. Um, there's going to need to be some serious planning because that building's going to cost a lot of money. There's still repairs that need to be done to the clock tower. We've had that. That's non flood. The roof's going to need to be replaced before I die. Hopefully. So we had this same and conversation October, uh, right, May 10th. Did, but I'm just like reiterating, to... there's going to be a <laughs> lot of $100,000 projects down there. Now I'll just reiterate, we're broke. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember, there, there is clappers that made, huh? There yeah. is some clappers for that uh, clock tower down in lower storage. <clears throat> Wonderful. Upstairs. Oh, for you to um, put on. So. So yes, yeah, so the village yeah. is good with you guys doing whatever to make it winterize. There's budgetary, you know good work stuff into the budget or have special articles for the Is there Morris grant Pope. money for that kind of thing? Is there grant money for like roofs on municipal That roof was replaced a couple of years ago. It doesn't need to be replaced for a while. I'm sorry. Again, long-term planning. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just I think it's better if we have the money now and we use it in 20 years. Um, long-term planning on it for the roof ought to be steel and not shingles at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, wasn't there steel okay, on we're it? Like, no. Took it off. no. Okay. It was I mean, I tend to agree with you, Ken, but it doesn't matter right now. Right. We're not there yet. So, yes, we can give us some proposals of what you think, and we'll either do an article or a we'll timeline. Do the budget. timeline. It's, it's I'm gonna, we, we I want to throw something out there that just, and I haven't really even talked to this board about it, but it's, it's an idea. Do with it what you want. We, we certainly don't need to do anything with it tonight. But on the long-term plan, um, consider whether or not there would be any interest, given the fact that you got no money, um, 
of having the town own the building and the village rent the space, rent the office space. Um, th then you wouldn't be responsible for, you know, those long-term. So that'd be free rent for a couple of years to make up the fifty percent. It, it could certainly we could certainly yeah, come to some arrangement, that. you know, to figure that yeah, out. That's something, but, something definitely think about. Yeah, yeah. just. Mm -hmm. Like and that would require a town vote if they're like our village vote i guess our town our property wouldn't be changing hand but the village yeah vote. technically it would probably be the village selling the, their interest to the town yeah, so, so that's probably, probably going to require us we're hoping you'd move the building and sell the land to us <laughs> yeah. okay mm -hmm. but anyway just something to think about so yes so to evan your question is is that yes i think we're good with you guys doing whatever you want need to do to winterize it I love that. Keep us informed. Just the occupants will just like make motion. sure we move back and forth for as few as times possible. Um, yeah, great. In the, the in this, we, we I don't want to go down. We want to be, have the carpet under us, the walls painted, and we're there. It may not be carpet. Um, it may not be carpet. Another well, meet, like short. Hold memory. on a minute before the. When the like, stop in this may not be carpet thing. I thought that at first too until I talked to our resident construction expert that says. There's a reason why you put carpet in offices, and that reason is Noise. acoustics. Noise. And carpet also safety. Safety and acoustics. No carpet. You don't, you don't fall don't in wet spots, and you really don't have echo with carpet. Yeah, the noise would be in the show. Mm -hmm. But, understood. Another medium short range thing, um, I was in conjunction with the staff, would be opening the town offices. We haven't really discussed that a ton. I mean, given the time of year, or just like a good a good example is the tile out in the entryway that they put in, thinking it was better than carpet. What happened in the flood? It had to get ripped out, just like the carpet. Yes. Did it didn't help a bit. But are we trying to get the employees down here before winter? Is that the goal? Yeah, but <laughs> no. Okay. It would be nice. That'd be great, yeah. wouldn't it? Evan and I were going to do it. Tile, tile fared no better in the <laughs> flood than the carpet did. Did you talk to Evan about that? Right. What's up? We're going down there this weekend. So I don't, I don't know. Do that. Uh, I don't okay, know are we done? Looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.